Hello, everyone. I'm Laura Podesta. Thank you for joining us. The top Republican in Congress and former top military leaders are all slamming President Trump. In an op-ed Friday, Senator Mitch McConnell rebuked the president's decision to withdraw troops from northern Syria. The Senate leader called the move a, quote, grave mistake. Retired General William McRaven and former Defense Secretary James Mattis also had some harsh words for Mr. Trump. Here's Paula Reed. I'd earned my spurs on the battlefield, Martin, as you pointed out, and Donald Trump earned his spurs in a letter from a doctor. Former Defense Secretary uh, no James Mattis, who resigned in protest in December, roasted his former boss last night, just a day after the president called him the most so overrated general. I'm honored to be considered that by, by Donald Trump because he also called Meryl Streep an overrated actress. <laughs> So I guess I'm the Meryl Streep of generals. <laughs> President Trump took pride in the number of generals he installed in his cabinet, but they have all left. Sometimes you have to let them fight a little while. And his decision to pull U.S. troops out of northern Syria, allowing the Turks to then attack America's longtime Kurdish allies, has prompted several top former military commanders to go public with their concerns. Retired Admiral William McRaven, who oversaw the killing of Osama bin Laden and the capture of Saddam Hussein, wrote, the republic is under attack from the president, and asked, if our promises are meaningless, how will our allies ever trust us? Adding, if we are not the champions of good and the right, then who will follow us? I think Trump forgets that we are a nation of values. Former Navy Admiral Sandy Winnefeld, who served under President Obama, said McRaven perceives Mr. Trump's decision in the Middle East as a threat to the nation. I do think it's possible that the situation in Syria, where some of the people he served with are deeply embedded into that problem, might have pushed him over the line to, to write the op-ed that he wrote. And Paula Reed joins me now from the White House. Paula, Mattis has been criticized for not condemning the president, but now some are faulting him for his speech, saying he didn't go far enough. So what do critics want to hear from the former defense secretary? That's right. As recently as his last month, he said he would not criticize a sitting president. And then he came out during this charity dinner in New York and effectively roasted the president. And some criticized him for coming out with jokes about the president, as opposed to coming out with serious criticism backed by his own gravitas. He also published a book, and some of his critics argue he should have put more of this criticism, more of this analysis in that book because it would have had more heft than this roast. But today we spoke with an admiral who knows uh, the general, and he said that, look, he has a great sense of humor, and this is his way of sort of tactfully uh, responding to the president's criticism from that meeting earlier this week where he called him the most overrated general. Mm -hmm. Do you think that this roast is affecting President Trump in any way? Do you think it's resonating inside the White House? I don't think it is. And the reason is because it doesn't really resonate with the president's supporters. I was at a rally with the president Thursday night, a packed rally in Dallas. And he kept coming back to this idea that American troops shouldn't be at the center of foreign conflicts. It was the biggest applause line of the night. He kept coming back to it, suggesting that clearly his supporters uh, do not share the general or the admiral's worldviews. Paula Reed, thank you.